Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's SANS webcast, a Purple Team approach to exploring AWS security services and capabilities. My name is Carol Auth of SANS, and I will be moderating today's webcast. Today's featured speaker is Kenneth G. Hartman, SANS Certified Instructor. If during the webcast you have any questions for our presenter, please enter, please enter them into the questions window at any time. Please note that this webcast is being recorded and a copy of the slides and recording of this webcast will be available for viewing later today and can be found on the SANS registration page. And with that, I'd like to end the webcast over to Kenneth. Well, thank you, Carol. So a little bit more about myself. I'm, as Carol said, one of the uh, certified instructors in the cloud curriculum. I've taught the SEC 545 Cloud Security Architecture and Operations course. Now I think about two and a half years, um, I think it's coming on close to about 30 times. And then I've also taught uh, most recently the Security 488, the brand new Cloud Security Essentials course. So I was able to um, be involved in kind of getting that new class off the ground. So um, this is toward our cloud curriculum. Uh, we're trying to always come up with fresh content. We have a YouTube channel and the whole bit. So I'll tell you a little bit more about the cloud curriculum at the end of today's talk. The objectives for today's talk, I want to showcase how we can use security services to defend our cloud workloads. I also want to get the idea across that you can use the cloud as your personal learning laboratory. I often will spin up a virtual machine and run a couple experiments on it and then blow it away when I'm done. And I'm often uh, copying and pasting the different commands that I run and then we'll eventually convert those into scripts. And then of course, purple team and purple teaming is kind of the latest rage. So I thought it would be fun to use a purple team approach to look like what attacks look like in the cloud native instrumentation as well as how how we can defend them so as we look at the problems that we face as we move to the cloud there's multiple different cloud service providers there's aws azure google cloud platform and then there's a long tail which includes uh, godaddy rackspace uh, voltier and, and and on and on and on uh, digital ocean. So each of these cloud services providers have various cloud services that also must be secured properly. So there's so much to learn, a very steep learning curve for all of us. Now, the mature cloud services providers, the AWS, the Azure's Google Cloud Platform, they've also created security services that we can use in conjunction with their normal cloud services but there's learning curve involved in learning how to leverage these security services as well and then when it comes to the offensive side you know offensive well, skills are hard to come by sans has a whole curriculum on penetration testing and one of the things that we find is defenders may not have enough skills to recognize what a common attack might look like in the cloud, especially if it's caught by cloud native instrumentation. And then of course, penetration testers themselves need to continue to evolve and learn how to use their skills and their tools in the cloud and discover for themselves what works and what does not work. So I was looking for a great slide to illustrate the whole red team, blue team, purple team concept. And this is ripped off of the purpleteamfieldmanual.com website. But I like it, right? So what is the red team all about? Penetration testing and emulating threats and social engineering so that the organization knows what real attacks look like. And of course, the blue team, we're trying to defend it. We're trying to be proactive and, and evolve our defenses as the attackers evolve their techniques against us. And of course, the never-ending challenge of maintaining a environment that's free of known vulnerabilities. So when we work together, we can actually create a purple team. So what I will often tell people in the SEC 545 courses, if you're having a penetration test done, doesn't it make sense 
that your security operations center is trying to track their progress through the engagement. So um, what we're going to do in this talk is I'm going to basically demo it and we're going to um, run a command and then we're going to look and see what it looks like in our instrumentation. Then we'll run another command and we'll just kind of repeat that a few times and just see what it looks and hopefully have some fun. With that said, SANS is also launching a whole brand new graduate certificate program in Purple Team Operations. So definitely want to check this out. Um, it'll be led by uh, Stephen Sims, um, a phenomenal uh, speaker and educator. So, but I, I kind of want to manage your expectations. We're just going to be scratching the surface. We're going to barely call it purple teaming, but it's a good way to look at both sides of the coin. And I, for one, don't consider myself an elite pen tester, but, you know, like I said, we'll have some fun. I also feel obliged to talk a little bit about preventive controls versus detective controls, right? So we know that preventive controls are intended to stop attacks, right? Like a firewall or a <coughs> or locks on your house door where detective controls are the alarm that goes off if the intruder is actually was able to break into your house. So with the cloud, we are able to design very robust preventive controls. But since this talk is focused on trying to learn what a t different types of attacks looks like, I've intentionally created a, an environment that has very weak preventive controls, but strong, fairly strong detective controls. So let me explain to you what this architecture looks like. I will be running it in AWS and I chose the US East 2 region, that's Ohio. Uh, I think everybody chooses US East 1, which is Northern Virginia by default. So that is the largest region by like double of any other size. So AWS is definitely trying to shift workloads away from US East 1 into other regions. So now when you make a brand new account, it, it's starting to default you into Ohio. So anyway, I chose Ohio. And then you have a VPC. A VPC is your personal chunk of the cloud. It stands for Virtual Private Cloud, and it's both a um, software object-oriented construct and a networking construct in that it contains other objects, such as the EC2 instances, um, the security group, and um, routing rules and so forth. So it's basically your virtual network. So on this virtual network, I have a internet gateway that allows traffic to and from the internet. And then I've also configured an application load balancer. Uh, and when you use an application load balancer, it wants to direct traffic between two different availability zones. So I'm using, I have it configured to send to traffic to US East 2B, and it's supposed to say US East 2C. Uh, it says 1C, but it should say 2C. I made a change in, uh, and, and, and made an error there. But, and then I, but I only have one virtual machine running because that's all I need for this demo. So um, since the application load balancer is trying to load balance between two different availability zones, which are essentially two different logical data centers, but I only have one virtual machine that it can send traffic to, all traffic will be sent to this particular EC2 instance. And it's a T2 type of uh, micro, uh, T2 micro instance. And it is in a WordPress security group. And I'll show you what that security group looks like. And what we're gonna see is that in a, a user named Joe misconfigured the security group to allow traffic from the internet uh, that should be blocked by the security group. So only the traffic uh, destined to our EC2 instance should be coming through the load balancer, but in this case, we'll, we're going to be allowing HTTP, SSH, and FTP from the internet, which is a, a huge no-no. Okay, uh, I also have a variety of different services that we'll uh, have running. Security Hub, Guard Duty, AWS Inspector, AWS Config, CloudTrail, and CloudWatch. Now, I have a GitHub page that you can find using a shortened link. It's just bit.ly cloud purple team demo one. And I have that up 
handy dandy in a web page. So when you come to this markdown page, you'll see basically what I did to set up my account. I created a brand new AWS account called Cartman Demo One. And by the way, accounts are ephemeral, just like virtual machines are, just like other cloud assets are. So in AWS, you can create them and destroy them all day long, uh, especially if you have a parent account, then all your billing even flows up to that parent account. So then I've enabled guard duty. I've set up CloudWatch, and I'll show you how I did all this. I've enabled flow logs, and then I'm also sending my CloudTrail logs to an S3 bucket. And then I've, uh, uh, it, like I said, I enabled config and I've got um, made a bucket for config and I've enabled security hub. I've also created a user named Joe. And as we see that Joe will, he's the uh, guy who misconfigured the security group and he has full EC2 access permission. So let me show you these different, um, uh, configurations. All right, so the first thing I need, I'm in my demo one account, and then I, let's go take a look at guard duty. So my settings um, is basically just enabled, I had to give it a service uh, role permission, and then um, down here you can click this, it will send one of each of the sample findings that guard duty can detect into your list of findings. You can also enable and suspend it. So that really is all there is to enabling guard duty. Now, um, I also enabled CloudWatch. So I have a service called CloudWatch. And um, down here is the settings. So, uh, And then up here is, uh, I have various log groups that I've set and I'll show you how these work. So I made one called demo one flow logs. That is for my VPC, um, my virtual private cloud, which is configured to collect all the flow logs of all the traffic going on in my account. So the next thing that I need to do is go into my VPC. So if I type VPC, I only have one VPC and that is my default VPC. I can make additional ones. So let's click here and we can see the various settings. So I can see which IP address block was assigned to it. And then down here is my flow log. So I have my flow log which is, has a unique ID number, I'm going to CloudWatch logs and a destination of K Hartman demo one flow log. So if I click here, that will open the flow, the CloudWatch log service again, and brings me right to my demo one flow logs group. And then I have a variety of different log streams. These log streams are sorted by the Elastic Network interface. So if I take a look at, let's just poke into one. So I can see, um, this is my account ID, the Elastic Network interface, the source IP address, destination IP address, source port, destination port, uh, protocol six means TCP, um, the number of packets, the number of bytes, start time, end time, and whether it was blocked or not. And then you always see an okay because that means it logged it. So that is the basic layout of a flow log. And as you'll see, even though we're not capturing packet level details, just knowing the volume of traffic going between two ports and whether or not it was blocked and so forth can provide a lot of valuable security information to us. The other thing that we enabled was CloudTrail. So if I come over here, click this icon, it brings me back to my place where I can search for services. So Cloud. PR, and that brings me to CloudTrail. So now with CloudTrail, 
what I can do is I can search for recent events or I can configure a trail. So let me show you how I configured a trail because we'll come back here later and search for specific events. So the name is just called management events and it's dumping it to a bucket called cloud trail logs. So, and it's for this region. And then I'm also sending it to a CloudWatch logs group as well. So if I click here, we can see the S3 bucket that my CloudTrail log is dumping to. Okay, and now I, um, I've cleared this uh, bucket for the start of this talk. Okay, so um, that is, let's take a look at the other S3 bucket. So I've got one um, for my CloudTrail, I've set up one for config, and then I also have a bucket for my guard duty threat list. So let's take a look in here. I have a custom threat list. And if I click here to open it, this will show the two IP addresses. So um, this most recent one is my current Kali Linux instance where I'll be doing the attack from. I also enabled the config service. So let me show you the config service. So the config service allows us to set up different rules. So we come here, um, I can add a rule, and there's a whole bunch of different rules. Are your access keys rotated? Do you have a, a web application firewall enabled on your load balancer? And I don't, I just have the load balancer going. Uh, do you have expiring certificates? And then when those rules fire, you'll get a, uh, indication as to whether or not it's compliant or not. So here I have a rule called restricted SSH. Restricted SSH means that checks whether security groups that are in use disallow unrestricted incoming traffic. Basically what I have is I have an SSH security group rule that is open to the world. So let's take a look at uh, those settings. If I go into EC2, I have one running instance. Okay, here is its public IP address. Here is its private IP address. And um, it's in a security group called WordPress. So let's view the inbound rules of my WordPress security group. And um, up here, I can see, well, actually, let me click on it. That will open it in a better view. There's a parent pane and a child pane, right? So if I click here, it will maximize the lower pane. So I have SSH port 22 allowing from 0.0.0.0 slash .0, .0, 0, 0. So that means SSH is open to the world. The other thing that I've done is I've opened the other ports up to my workstation as well as um, the Kali instance that I was using previously in the Kali instance that I'm currently using. Because every time you reboot Kali, it assigns it a new DHCP IP address. So um, what I'm doing is by opening up uh, the IP address to my Kali Linux, I'm um, simulating that it was open up to the world, but I literally don't want it open up to the world. Otherwise, you guys would be hacking my EC2 instance while I'm talking to you, and I want you paying attention. I would also be getting attacks from around the world, and, um, and we'll show you what that looks like as well. So that is our EC2 instance and its security group configuration. So the next step, in my setup was to make an intentionally vulnerable WordPress EC2 instance. So I already have one running, but let me show you what I did to set it up by creating a brand new one. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna launch a T2 micro EC2 instance, and I'm gonna name it WP2 since I have WP already running, and then I'm gonna put it into the WordPress security group. And then, um, the other thing that I didn't show you is that I've attached a role to the EC2 instance. 
the role that I've attached to the EC2 instance looks like, well, here's how you set it up, how to create a role, and it's called the CloudWatch agent server role. What that does is it allows my EC2 instance to send logs up to CloudWatch. So let me show you that. If I go to my instances, I have a role called CloudWatch agent server role that is attached to this EC2 instance. So if I click here, that brings me over to IAM. And here I can see that there's a policy attached to the role that the EC2 instance can assume called the CloudWatch agent server policy. If I click in here, I can see all the permissions that that policy has. It's allowed to do some stuff in uh, CloudWatch and EC2 and Systems Manager. And here's what the JSON for that policy looks like. Now, some of this may be foreign to you, but I know that it may not be foreign to everybody. For those of you that is foreign to, just kind of enjoy the ride because we'll get into some of the nitty gritty so you can see the, the whole purple teaming side. But I also want to set the stage so that people understand what it is that we actually have. Okay, so I'm going to close this since I already have one tab open to my AWS account. So now what I want to do is launch a EC2 instance. So I'm going to come here, launch an instance. This is that intentionally vulnerable one. Now I'm going to use Amazon Linux AMI, not Amazon Linux 2 AMI. Amazon Linux 2 AMI is the latest and greatest stuff. And we don't want the latest and greatest stuff because we're trying to make an intentionally vulnerable WordPress EC2 instance. By the way, I have a client that's been running the same EC2 instance for about five years now. In fact, it's so old, it predates when they came out with the VPC service, so it's not even attached to a virtual private cloud. So there are, there is a lot of old stuff running, and then you also wonder, is it being patched? All right, so I chose the T2 micro, because that's in the free tier. Next, I'm gonna configure the instance details. So um, I'll put it into uh, a specific availability zone, right? Like maybe 2C as an example. And um, well, let me put it into one that I know. Yeah, I'll just put it into 2A. And um, leave, oh, here's where I would attach the role. Now I'm not, I'm purposely not gonna attach the role because I only want, what am I, virtual machine sending logs so that we don't confuse ourselves when we're looking at the logs. Then I could add a tag. I'm gonna add a tag called name. And I'm gonna call this one WP2 for WordPress instance two. Configure the security group. Here's where I choose the WordPress security group. Notice I have another security group attached to my load balancer. I'll show you my load balancer here in a minute and then launch. Then I'm going to use a key that I created previously to be able to connect to it. So now, if I click View Instances, I'll see the virtual machine booting up. Okay, in a second it'll be done. So I'm going to SSH to it with um, a terminal that I use, which is uh, MOBA Xterm, which I just love. So I'm going to call this one, I'm going to rename it so I keep my connection straight. I'm going to call this WP2. Okay, so the next thing that I need to do when the virtual machine is running, let's see if it's running yet. Okay, it's running, is I need to connect to it. So I need to connect to it with my key, and here's the fully qualified domain name of the EC2 instance. So what I do is I just copy that whole thing, close it. Now I'm gonna come back to my terminal. Now I need to be where my keys are. My keys are kept in a directory called uh, .ssh. All right, and then I'm gonna paste in that connection string. Yes, I wanna connect. And now I've SSH into my EC2 instance. So the next thing that I needed to do was to 
um, run a chunk of code. Now the chunk of code is what um, go. There we go. Here's the, here's the code. I'm going to install some old services and then I'm going to configure uh, the HTTP file. Um, I'm, I'm also going to reconvert my error log format and my um, access log format so that it's JSON formatted. I don't know if you knew you can do that, but that's pretty cool. So I'm doing it. And then I'm also um, starting the service. I'm also turning on an FTP service on it and uh, getting its IP address and um, setting that so I can even do passive with uh, FTP. Uh, here is where I'm setting the password of my root user. Pretty scary, right? Password one, two, three, four, five, six. So it's intentionally vulnerable. And then I'm using that as my WordPress database password as well. And um, then I'm configuring logging for the CloudWatch logs agent. So I'm writing to a file called uh, config.json in a particular directory. And this is telling it to pull the access log, the error log, the FTP log, the audit log, the var log secure, and the cron log. And that I'm installing inspector agent. And for fun, I'm even putting some fake keys on the um, on the system. So I have an access key and a, uh, and a secret uh, SSH private key. Now, when I uploaded this to GitHub, I immediately got alert from people saying, hey, you have credentials in GitHub, and that's a pretty cool service that certain organizations are doing. So that is the, the script that I need to run. So um, if I come up here, page up, go into raw, I can go control A, control C, and now I can come over here and paste this into my command line. So now I'm making the intentionally vulnerable virtual machine. The next thing that I'll need to do, and I'm gonna kind of just in the interest of time, um, let's see, come back here to, What I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, configure it so it says first website. I'm creating a user called Joe, and I'm using the word password as the password of the WordPress site. Plug in an email. And then the next thing that I did was I activated some plugins. I set the uh, theme. And then I configured my load balancer. So um, let's take a look at the load balancer while this guy is running. Nope. Oh. Yeah, it's done. So um, let me go back to my instances and I need to get its public IP address. And I'm gonna put this into a browser. I don't know if, it, if you all have played with WordPress, but this is what the WordPress configuration looks like. So English and then um, first website, username is Joe. Password is not going to be strong. It's going to be password because nobody would think of that. Confirm the weak use, then so that is basically me. Uh, and I'm getting warnings, right? So. Um, and, and I'm not going to do the rest of the configuration, but the next, rest of the configuration is basically just activating the, um, the plugins and so forth. Because what I want to show you next is the load balancers. Here's the load balancers. 
on the right-hand navigation menu. So I have one that I called WordPress for lack of something better. And I can see that's configured to use availability zones A, B, and C. And that um, I have a listener configured. I can view the rules, send it to um, Word, the WordPress security group. And then here is the targets, the WordPress target group. Uh, target, I have it going to a single instance that exists in US East 2C and it's healthy. I could configure um, the, the second one that I launched, but I'm not going to, because I only want this one listening to incoming requests through my load balancer. So this is the step-by-step -step instructions of how to do that, should you want to repeat this lab at home. The next thing that I did was I set up a Kali instance, and then um, I showed you the custom threat list that I configured in guard duty. Uh, that's pretty cool. You can just make a text file of all these IP addresses that you consider to be threats, and then guard duty will throw an alert when you have traffic from one of those in the threat list. And then we had a user who logged in as Joe, and he opened up all the rules to allow access from the uh, Kali external IP address. So this is meant to simulating him opening up to everywhere. Okay, so that is the setup. The next thing that we're gonna do is commence with our attack. So uh, that would be right here. Actually, let me just go up and go to the attack markdown page. So now we're going to attack the WordPress system from the Kali. So the first thing that I needed to do was to set the target IP address. So if I flip over to my terminal and then I get to my Kali, you can see where I've set it. So it's uh, 18.188.66.37. Sounds good. All right, and then what's next? The next thing that I wanna do is perform an Nmap scan. All right, so we can see that we have FTP and SSH open and HTTP open. We're even getting some header um, information back. Um, cool. So what does that look like in our logs? That is the big question. So the next thing that we'll do is we'll um, let's go to um, CloudWatch, see what CloudWatch picked up. So Cloud W will bring us over to the CloudWatch service. And because I have the CloudWatch logs agent installed on that EC2 instance, it's now sending us the access log, the audit log, the cron log, the air log, and the FTPD log. Here's my flow logs, and here's my cloud trail logs. We're gonna take a look at those as well. So let's go in and take a look at the uh, flow logs. And um, let's just choose one as an example. So remember, here is the different, uh, uh, the Elastic Network interface, the IP address, the source destination, source port destination port, protocol, number of packets and size of the packet, the number of bytes. Number of packets, number of bytes. So there's another thing that CloudWatch has called insights, which I just love. So what we need to do is we need to choose the log group that we're interested in. So here, let's go to flow logs. Now, if you just run this, we'll get the basic information that we see in our CloudWatch. But we also see a visualization of when all the traffic occurred recently. So now we can use query statements. So for example, what we can do is we can 
So if, if you're being port scanned, what you might be interested in is, well, which ports got scanned? So in that case, I've created a SQL statement called filter by just the destination where the destination address is my target host, my WordPress host, but then I want to count by destination port and sort it in port order. So if I run this query for the last hour, I can see that um, starting with port 19, 20, 21, 22, that it looks like most of my ports have been hit at least once. Now, it may also take a little bit of time for the information to propagate over, but I did blow away all of these log groups before I started my demo. So um, if we go back here to the insights, paste that in again, access log, and I wanna say in the last uh, 12 hours. Yeah, so if I go to the last hour, let's see what happens. Okay, um, access log. Let's do this. Let's go log groups. Go back to log insights. Access log. So getting a lot of data. Now if I paste in that customized query. Okay. Um, now let's take a look at, uh, so um, let's go to the, um, oh, I know. It's not access log, I'm using the long, wrong log group. I wanna be looking at my flow logs, I'm sorry. There we go, okay, so yeah, all right. And, and notice that it's, if I change my time horizon to 12 hours, we'll see when the very first logs start. Yeah, they, they started uh, just this morning when I first created this virtual machine. Okay, and now you can see that I basically ran that Nmap scan multiple times. That's what I was looking for. Okay, and you can see about when I ran, boom, boom, boom. Okay, so that is the Nmap scan. The next thing that we wanted to do was to um, go to, we wanted to run NIC2. Now, NIC2 is a, Pretty cool tool. It's been around for forever, but it's a tool that allows you to do an assessment of a generic web server. So first we're going to do um, a scan of the web server itself, and then we're going to next follow that up with a scan of WordPress. Take just a second here for Nick2 to do its magic. So it's finding issues, and it's finding those issues by making requests of our web server, and we'll see those in the HTTP request log. And no, I don't want to submit them. All right, so that's done. So let's take a look at those in our access logs. So if I come back here to log groups, if I look in access logs, yeah, I'm seeing a bunch of different requests, but it's kind of hard to read in this format. So let's, oh, since I put it in JSON, that's a little more helpful. Look at the user agent, Nick2, okay? So, um, 
what I can do is I can go to CloudWatch Logs Insights and I can focus where the user agent is like Nick to. So I need to choose my HTTP access request logs and use this query. So I'm just, give me the timestamp, the IP of the client, the forwarded IP, the status, request, query, and user agent. Sort it by time. Okay, since I deleted it, it's going to take it a second for it to show up. Um, I'm going to go ahead and run my next attack, and then we'll come back here. So the next attack is going to be scanning WordPress. So um, to do that, I need to use a token. I've already exported my token because you don't get to see what my API token is. That would be information leakage, and we try not to leak information. All right, so let's run the WP scan. So I'm going to come over here and paste. So Word WP scan is kicking off and it's found finding all kinds of issues with WordPress, um, all of which we might want to try and attack all those different vulnerabilities, but we're not going to take the time to do each of those. All right, so um, now if I go back to my, let me see if it populated yet. There we go. All right, so like I say, sometimes in the cloud, it just takes it a while for information to move from point to point. So here I'm filtering just on the NIC2 stuff. And look at all the different types of requests and query strings that the NIC2 utility was hitting that web server with and um, let me change it to be just within the last hour and rerun it because I want to see it in the visualization of yeah so you you can see that was just a little bit ago that we ran that okay now the next thing was let's try and see if we can see the results from WP scan and this is going to be very similar, except for now I'm focusing on the where the user agent is like WP scan. So here is that user agent. See if those came over yet. No results. All right. We'll check those in a minute because I want to keep making wise use of our time. So I ran that. Now, the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to do a brute force attack on my um, FTP server. To do that, I'm going to use a list of FTP passwords as published by a security rock star named Daniel Meisler. But I'm only going to take the top 15 and I'm going to rename it as password list. And then I'm going to tack on my known password to the bottom. The reason is because I want to simulate brute forcing, but I don't want to wait for forever for it to go through this massive password list. Then what I need to do is replace the, the colon in the list with a space for Metasploit to work properly. Then I'm firing up a Metasploit script that says brute force it at a speed of three and um, stop on success. So let's take this whole thing and paste that into my command. All right, and get it to run. All right, so now it's starting to um, do its brute forcing, starting to fail as it tries each of the different ones. While this is doing that, let's see if my query results are back yet. There we go. All right, so see where the WP scan. So here is the requests and the query 
portion of the request that WordPress WP scan was making of my WordPress instance. So this is what we can see it looking like in the logs in CloudTrail by just coming up with a properly formatted query string. Now, while I'm brute forcing, let's also take a look at another log group, our error log group. The error log group logs all the errors that are generated and because this is a terrible website, look at I'm getting all kinds of PHP errors. Sometimes the errors are the results of misconfigurations, and sometimes the errors are the results of tools trying to do things to get the system to behave in a particular way. So there may be gold in the error log that is worth looking at. Now, what I could do is um, go back into my insights, and I want to choose error. Let's just take a look at how many unique log entries we have. And to do that, I'm going to use another query statement where I'm just counting it by message. So I'm getting a whole bunch of where this particular field is not, this particular file is not found. You know, so you need to be looking at your uh, your logs and you can do that very easily in the cloud using these types of tools. Now, um, also what I can do is take a look at um, what WP scan did in my flow logs. So let me do that real quickly. So change from here to the flow logs group. And um, Here, what I'm curious of is just how many times port 80 was hit. So destination address like my target, WordPress system, destination port 80. See, WP scan um, and the NIC2 scan, very noisy. All right, so let's see if my brute forcing is done. Come back here to Yep, so it found that it successfully brute forced the root password, found its password is one, two, three, four, five, six. Now, what does that look like when we're looking in um, the cloud? We'll come over here to CloudWatch again, and this time we're looking at the, well, we're still looking at the flow logs, but now we're gonna key on destination port 21. In fact, what I'm gonna do is change the filter to be just the destination port. No, that, it's already there. Okay, good, let's run this. Yeah, so um, this is the, the flow log record. Okay, but let's take a look at it in another log called the VS FTPD log. So here's my log group. Here's what it looks like just when we look at it raw. Right, so um, here's logging as guest or logging in as admin. So let's filter it where we're just looking for fields where it says the word user, all caps. So to do that, I'm gonna go back to insights. choose FTPD log and then paste that in here. So I'm just where the message is like user, run this. Ah, so here's all the different users that were tried to brute force my system. Okay, now the next thing that um, we're gonna do is we're gonna install a web shell. So this is pretty cool. We're gonna, the web shell that we're gonna use is called Weavely. So Weavely is a weaponized web shell. It's um, pretty cool. It's uh, It looks like a simple PHP script, but it's obfuscated. And all the traffic to the web shell is obfuscated as well. So let's run that. 
on our Kali instance. So to do that, uh, I'm going to come down to the bottom and um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to git clone the uh, the code, th then I install it um, along with all of its uh, requirements, and then um, I'm going to. So I created a file called main.php. This is the web shell, and um, look at where it's going to put it. It's putting in WordPress WP content plugin main.php. And then the password is simply my password. So um, I already have Weebly installed. So now what I need to do is CD in the um, into that directory from my Kali Linux instance. So there I'm in Weebly. Now the next thing that I need to do is grab that command to run. And that is this one. So now I have a web shell, okay? The next thing that it wants me to do is run some commands. The commands that I'm gonna run is run who am I, you name, and um, then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna download a file so we can see what that looks like. And then after that, after looking at that, then I'm gonna actually kick off a scan. So let's run these first few ones. All right, so there uh, I just dumped all the um, the password, I mean the list of users using SC password, and then I CD'd into the var HTML. Notice that the user is Apache, and when I did who am I, the user was Apache. So um, I'm definitely on that instance. It even tells me in the prompt. Now the next thing that I want to do is download the um, the file. There's some built-in commands that start with colon in the web shells. And this one that I'm using is called file download. Okay, so um, I've downloaded that. Now let's see if we can find that by looking at our, um, at our data. So if I go back to the log groups. Um, the list of insights. So this is up there so that all these things that I did looking for it. So the first thing that I want to do is look for the, the exfiltration. So let's run this set of commands on the access log. I'm going to leave, I'll be done in just two minutes because I want to leave a little bit of time for questions. So, um, so this is basically all of the access logs. Now what I want to do is focus in on just the ones where the byte set were greater than a thousand. And maybe that will help us find the data exfiltration. Now to see that though, I need to scroll over to the right. Okay, so my my results from my file download have not propagated over yet, um, but I'm not gonna take the time to wait for those. So um, let me just kind of wrap up real quickly. So that was Weavely, that was, looking see that we can actually identify each of these. Um, there's also where we can look in CloudTrail to see what Joe did, but unfortunately, I'm not gonna have time to show you um, how to find what Joe did when he changed the security group in CloudTrail. As I mentioned, this is the SANS cloud curriculum. Uh, we have the cloud security essentials, which is brand new, as well as SEC 545. We also have one that came out recently on pen testing and um, 
uh, Management 516 on vulnerabilities. So with that, what I'll do is I'll turn it over for any questions. All right, thanks for that great presentation. We do have one question ready for the Q&A. However, if anyone has a question for Kenneth, please enter it into the questions we know now. This one asks, what was the bit.ly URL and GitHub URL? Oh, yeah. So let me go back to that. So um, if you go cloud-purpleteam-attack, that will bring you to the attack web page. So if I click here, uh, but then this is the whole repository, the cloud purple team demo. So um, here's how I set it up. Here's me running the attacks and here's me looking for the information in um, insights and then at the end which i didn't get to is a little bit of a demo on looking in athena at the load balancer logs any other questions that's all i'm seeing anything more you want to add yeah well, let me show you what it looks like in athena so if i switch over here i go to the athena service So um, here I have my um, a query statement and I've pre-populated my load balancer. If I run the query, we should be able to see all the hits on the load balancer. Now, my Kali instance wasn't hitting my load balancer, but you can see that I've already got 25 different hits since this thing was running uh, when I started at about 7 a.m. And that is just noise from the internet. So you definitely want to make sure you have load balancing logs enabled if you're using load balancers because there's gold. You'll be able to see what types of attacks you're under. Now, you will generate a large number of logs, so you need to think about uh, log retention. But that is um, another part that you definitely want to consider. You can then correlate the logs that you're seeing off each of your individual web servers with the logs from the load balancers themselves. And with that, I'll wrap it up. All right, well, thank you so much, Kenneth, for your great presentation, which helps bring this content to the SANS community. To our audience, we greatly appreciate you listening in. For a schedule of all upcoming and archived SANS webcasts, including this one, please visit sans.org forward slash webcasts. Until next time, take care, and we hope to have you back again for the next SANS webcast.